Greeting everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, quick update. I might possibly be on uh, PatriotsSoapbox.com. Uh, possibly. It looks pretty promising. Uh, I could use uh, some prayer and encouragement, I guess, but uh, letting everybody know just in case uh, you know who uh, boots me off their thing. Somebody wrote me and told me that uh, Shaking My Head's production, Shaking My Head production, was uh, deleted off YouTube. I had a pretty decent channel, uh, my opinion. Well, they had a good, they had a good channel. Um, I used to watch some of their stuff. And, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, I don't have a lot of time to watch other things. I mean, I appreciate everybody sending me stuff. Uh, sometimes something will come up and five or six people will send me the same type of information. I appreciate it. I don't have always have time to watch all everything. But I do like to keep up with what's going on because um, the wicked love to let you in on their plans before they do it. You know, they're, they're talking about the Great Reset, the Hunger Games, uh, you know, they they let you know what they're planning on doing. And then, then when they implement it, they could say, see, we were prophets. Well, P-R-O-F-I-T with a... Uh, dollar sign as an S. Yeah. But um, yeah, those kind of prophets, you know, like Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and yeah, those, those people. But um, so yeah, I'm, they're going to, they're going to, I don't know. I've been, I, I keep saying I'm probably not going to have much time on the tube, but I'm not that popular, you know? Uh, there was a time I had like, ooh, I don't know, like 12,000 subs. And then one day they were, ha over half of them were gone. So, all right, go to 1 Samuel chapter 28. This is going to be part eight of the Saul series. Uh, this is going to be the end of King Saul. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. Uh, Patriot Soapbox. I'm going to, what I'll probably do, being it's a live stream, I'll probably do, I don't know, maybe part of it a Bible study, part of it probably news, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. But um, uh, it's funny, you know, I was thinking this uh, tube door is probably getting ready to close and lo and behold something opens seems to open so uh, and I have a chance to uh, write some articles I've got a I got a bunch of articles I just got to format them uh, in the way that the uh, they like them so the Tentatively, the show is supposed to be from 10 to midnight, uh, two hours, 10 to midnight, Eastern Standard Time. So we'll see what happens. If the Lord wills, it'll happen. And if not, well, we'll see what happens. Honestly, I kind of suspect they're not going to pull anything until next fall. I mean, at the big, the big plug pulling. But that's just a guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't claim to be a prophet. Um, but if history is any indication, I think that'll. that's usually when in the past when they've pulled things. If you look at the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, which they were behind all that. Uh, and if you don't know who they is, well... Take a look at my playlist. 
and look up the sons of God, the angels that sinned, yeah, you'll find out. Also, uh, I've got um, somebody was kind enough to put my Bible studies on a zip file, and you can download those. And, um, you know, because there's, I'm telling you, they got laws on the books right now where they can make the words of Jesus, well, the words of Jesus are technically illegal in the United States. It's just they're not enforcing the law yet. And there is a purge coming. Believe me. There is a purge coming. I have a feeling they're going to get rid of the um, light-skinned police and military. I, I suspect that's what's going to happen. So... Yeah. And did you hear there was a city in Florida, town, town in Florida called Oldsmar, O-L-D-S-M-A-R, where supposedly they were um, hacked and um, they changed the chemical settings from a safe chemical setting to a dangerous chemical setting. I, they did it over the Internet. And what do you want to bet you're going to hear this more and more? I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, all right, let's get going here. 1 Samuel chapter 28. Saul, King Saul is getting ready to die. All right, so to recap, um, King David had killed Goliath, the giant, and uh, King Saul got jealous and did some things that uh, angered the Lord. The Lord's told, well, Samuel told King Saul that the Lord had decided he wasn't going to be king, his line, anyways. And uh, Saul decided he was going to get rid of the competition. And he tried to kill David a couple times. And David had a chance to kill Saul, but he didn't. So Saul repented. But then he let it creep back in. But this time, Lord's going to take care of David's problem with the king of Israel trying to kill David. This time, the Lord's going to take care of it. So David had to flee into the land of the enemies of Israel to get away from Saul. He couldn't stay in the land of Israel because uh, everybody was willing to rat him out. And you know what, people? When things get bad, all these churchgoers, they're going to rat you out. You know what? When people haven't eaten for a week, they will sell their own mother for a mouthful of food. Trust me. Judas uh, was not the first. I'm talking about Iscariot selling out Christ for, uh, what, 30 pieces of silver or 20 pieces? I think it, it was 30. I don't, I don't remember. All I know is he sold him out. And these churchgoers, they'll sell you out too. I mean, Jesus even warned in Matthew 24, Mark 13, that your own families would turn against you. As far as I'm concerned, uh, <laughs> you people are my family. So, my family's probably going to go to the other place with the third of the angels that fell from heaven for the most part. It's the way it is. That's the way it is, buddy boy. So, all right. So, King David ran off to the Philistines. And the king of the Philistines figured, hey, David's a good man of war. He brought 600 guys with him. Uh, you know, the king of Israel is trying to kill him. 
Maybe I can use them to my advantage. I mean, after all, David is a man of war. So, now you got to realize, the Philistines, uh, that's who, you know, they killed Goliath. Their, he, David killed Goliath, their champion. But now they figured, oh, okay, David has switched sides. We'll put him to good use here. So, with that in mind, 1 Samuel chapter 28. Verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight against Israel. And Achish, uh, Achish is the king of the Philistines, and Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men? Oh yeah, David, you're going to go with me to fight Israel. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. I mean, after all, hey, I killed Goliath. You know what I can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Well, what did David do to Goliath? He cut off his head. Right? So Achish is going to said, I'm going to make you the keeper of mine, my head forever. Verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. Uh, Samuel was the prophet. He was the uh, uh, priest of the Lord. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Uh, when it says Saul had put him away, uh, I read that as Saul had killed the witches, the wizards. What do you mean by familiar spirits? Well, when you meet somebody from the first time, they're a stranger, right? But if you're familiar with them, you know, that's probably where they get the word family. You know, familiar, family. Uh, it has the same root. But it means that you're familiar with them. I mean, you're acquainted with them. They're not strangers. You know, so familiar spirits. They're not strangers. You know who they are. So Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. What spirits? The fallen angels, the devils. Verse 4. Now keep that in mind. David had, I mean, Saul had uh, gotten rid of the wizards and witches and the those that did the seances and what have you. Uh, whether he killed them or expelled them, I'm not exactly sure. But when you start killing all the witches, uh, they're going to move. <laughs> that's that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, you got a group of witches and two or three of them get killed by the king. Uh, the other witches are going, hey, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put my house up for sale and uh, relocate here. Yeah. And guess what, people? Harry Potter. The uh, book and movie series about a wizard and witches school and group outsold the bible at least one year what does that tell you about america uh what's her name rawling she's a i guess a author in the uk she's i'm not sure if she's the richest woman in the uk but well she's probably not probably the royal family is when you look at it, but uh, she's one of the wealthiest women in the UK from the sales of all her books. What kind of a testimony is that against the country that gave us the King James Bible? A book about a wizard and witches outsells the Bible. That tells you the spiritual state of the world. All right, so, and Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. 
And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly, greatly trembled. Well, yeah, you know, the Lord had departed from you. The Lord doesn't answer Saul anymore. You know, Saul's afraid. Of course he'd be afraid. Verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. So Saul's praying to the Lord, asking the Lord to talk to him, and the Lord is quiet. No answer. The Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. You know, what's a familiar spirit? It's a devil. I want to talk to a witch. Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Uh, I'm old. I'm in my mid-60s. And there was a TV series called Bewitched. Uh, Elizabeth Montgomery. And she was a witch, married to a mortal. I don't remember exactly what years in the 60s that ran, but she had a mother whose name was Endora. So here it is. You got a witch in at Endor. Uh, is that just a coincidence? I don't think so. Yeah, I used to watch that stupid television show. Ugh. It was a comedy. Oh, it was so funny. Yeah, this witch. Yeah, she'd, she'd twinkle her nose or whatever she did. and Yeah. All right, so Saul's on his way to this witch at Endor. Verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, other clothes, and he went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by familiar spirit and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Oh, okay. So call, when he says he cut them off, he killed them. So Saul wasn't totally bad. Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Okay, so Saul had killed these people, definitely. And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. So Saul wants to talk to Samuel the prophet. Now remember, Samuel died. So, verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Wow. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods, gods, plural, ascending out of the earth. So evidently these are fallen angel spirits or something, you know, 
That's what they are. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he, Saul, said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. Now, what's a mantle? It was a type of clothing that the prophets would wear. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Now, I've had people say, Is this really Samuel or a devil spirit pretending to be Samuel? Well, the Bible says, And Samuel said to Saul. Now, Samuel's dead. At least his flesh, body. And uh, so I believe that the Lord actually allowed Samuel to talk to Saul. And this woman was scared. She knew this was not her normal familiar spirit. This is something different. You know, so she knows something's up. And she knew it was Saul. Boy, I tell you what. Uh, oh. So it says, And Samuel said to Saul. So I believe this is actually the real Samuel. He says, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Why are you bothering me to bring me here? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, so I, I think this is Samuel. Then said Samuel, wherefore then dost thou ask of me? Sing, the Lord has departed from thee, and has become thine enemy. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord ha hath rent, or torn, hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Now remember, Amalek was the grandson of Esau, Edom. And there's a very, very real possibility that King Herod, yeah, that King Herod, the bad guy family, was possibly of Amalek. Verse 19, Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. What? Samuel's telling Saul that tomorrow, that him, that Saul himself and his sons are going to be with Samuel. Well, Samuel's dead. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day nor all the night. So evidently Saul was fasting. And the woman came unto Saul, and saw that he was sore troubled, and said unto him, Behold, so here is a woman saying, Behold, thine handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, and I, have put, uh, and I have put my life in thy hand, and have hearkened unto thy words which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thine handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. Verse 23. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice, 
So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house, and she hastened and killed it and took flour and kneaded it and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they did eat. Then they arose up and went away that night. So not only is Saul going to die, but his sons also. Now remember, David and Jonathan, Saul's son, they're good friends. So this is not going to be a happy time for David. Even though Saul's trying to kill him, uh, it's not going to be a happy time for him. Now listen, I have, if you're interested in hearing more about the life of David from this point on, I have a playlist on uh, about uh, King David, a type of Christ. In some ways, Christ's uh, ministry was in some ways foreshadowed by King David. King David was a shepherd. Christ was a shepherd. Uh, King David was a man of war. Christ is going to be a man of war. Uh, king David was a king. Christ is king. He hasn't come down and reclaimed his earthly kingdom yet, but that's coming. Uh, they have a lot of parallels, a lot more than you might think. So, uh, King David was uh, chased around and they wanted to kill him. Christ, well, they chased him around and they did kill him. So, you know, King David's uh, life was very, very interesting, my opinion. Of course, you know, people think I have a strange life. And uh, to the world, I guess I do. So, what can I tell you? All right, chapter 29, 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed on in the re reward with Achish. Then said the princes of the Philistines, all right, so here it is. The princes of the Philistines are talking to the king and they're saying, what do these Hebrews here? You know, what are these Israelites doing here? I mean, we're getting ready to fight Israel and, and you got these guys hanging out in the rear, you know? And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistines, is not this David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel? which hath been with me these days or these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me this unto this day. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him, and the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return, that he may go again to his place, which thou hast appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. For where Wherewith should he be? Uh, should he reconcile himself unto his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Is not this David of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands? So here it is: the princes of the Philistines they're afraid of David. They're like, man, this guy's going to turn on us in the middle of the battle. Get him out of here. We don't want we don't want him. We don't need him. Get rid of him. Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight, for I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favor thee not. Wherefore now return and go in peace that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. And David said unto Achish, But what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long 
as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight, as an angel of God, notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. Yeah. Uh, my people don't want you here, David, so take a hike. In a nice way, of course, right? Wherefore now, rise up early in the morning with thy master's servants that are come with thee, and as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light, depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Now that's where Israel is. All right, I think I'm going to make this the end of part eight. All right, this is going to be the end of part eight. And uh, we will, part nine is going to be um, 30. Uh, chapter 30 of 1 Samuel. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.